In this video, I thought it would be fun to rank the draft class of 2020 in a tier list. For the different tiers, we have our Rookie of the Year candidates slash future MVPs, our future all-stars, solid starters, role players, bench warmers, the yikes, and then the big bust yikes. I've got all 14 projected lottery picks plus a couple of other picks that I just personally really like in this draft. And speaking of one of those picks that I just really like, the first guy on this list is Elijah Hughes, and I have him down as a solid starter. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I love Elijah Hughes. He led the ACC in scoring with 19 points per game, and the man can hit a three ball from anywhere on the court. He can get inside. He's a slasher. He is just a phenomenal athlete. Oh yeah, and he did this. There is nothing to not like about Elijah Hughes, and I am confident that his career as an NBA player will be as a solid starter for whatever team picks him. He will be a great, impactful player in the NBA for years to come. Next up is Denny Avdija, and I see him more as a role player. Now, I think there's a lot of potential here, but I really just don't see him turning out. I think he'll be more of a role player. He might come off the bench, or maybe he starts for a team for a couple of seasons. But really, I don't think he'll be a breakout star. He's certainly no Luka Doncic. I like him as a draft prospect, but I think he won't pan out as much as people would hope. I think he will be more of a role player type. And with our first rookie of the year candidate, it is Cole Anthony. Now, of course, this is hard to do to make rookie of the year candidates because you don't know what team they have gone to, which means you don't know what situation they're in. And that really does affect the rookie of the year race. But if we're talking pure talent, if we're talking pure prospects, Cole Anthony is definitely a rookie of the year candidate in my mind. This guy is an absolute freak athlete. He has the speed of John Wall and the athleticism of Russell Westbrook. His three ball is very good. His passing is great. I mean, there's nothing to not like about Cole Anthony. He had a lackluster season last year, but I mean, most of these prospects did. I mean, James Wiseman didn't even get to play last year that much. So really, Cole Anthony is a rookie of the year candidate in my mind. There's no doubt about it. I believe whatever team he goes to, he will be a rookie of the year contender without a doubt. Next up is LaMelo Ball, and I have him marked down as a future all-star. Now, whether that means it is his first year in the league being an all-star, definitely not. But he will be close to an all-star, if not an all-star, at some point in his career. I really think he can do that. He is obviously a better player than Lonzo Ball, and some people wanted Lonzo to be an all-star. Now, that's absurd. He, may, he might make, you know, all-defense team next year, but he's certainly no all-star. But LaMelo Ball has a lot better offense than Lonzo Ball. I really think he just needs to get on the right team to develop it correctly. And if he can do that, if his coach can teach him how to stay under control, to shoot a good three ball, then he will be an all-star in the future. And I really believe in this kid. Next up is Trey Jones. And this is a guy that I see as a role player, but I see as a very good role player. He is definitely a backup point guard. He won't, he won't be a good starting point guard. He might start at some point in his career, but that won't be ideal for a team. He is a great backup point guard for any NBA team, averaging 18.2 points per game this year and 6.4 assists is phenomenal numbers. This guy is a floor general. You can put him on the court with any lineup and he will get them buckets. He really knows how to get guys open. He is a tremendous passer. This is a guy that you want on your team no matter what team it is. He is just such a great floor general and leader and teammate. This is a guy that I hope any NBA team that at least is going to use him picks because he is such a great player and such a key piece of any offense and especially a second string offense that comes off of your bench. He can really improve that. Next up is Anthony Edwards, and this kid's a bust. He just, he's a big yikes. I don't want him. I don't want him on my team. I don't want my team to draft him. I don't want anything to do with Anthony Edwards in this draft unless he falls like below 10 or below seven, I'd say is probably my, my cap for this guy. I don't like Anthony Edwards as a prospect. I think we've seen too many guys who can't shoot a decent three but who can get inside and dunk, and they never turn out in the NBA. 
I don't like this pick. I think it's going to be a mistake for whatever team picks him, and God, I hope it's not the Hawks. Next up is a bit of a surprise pick. It's Precious Achua in the Rookie of the Year candidate slot. I believe Precious Achua is so underrated. This guy is absolutely incredible. He really picked it up and stood up for Memphis this year when James Wiseman went out. He really showed his capabilities all year at Memphis. I mean, he averaged a double-double. His defense is crazy. His offense is insane. I love Preston Achua's game. I think if he can just go to the right team where he'll start and where he'll be number one or number two option for scoring on that team, he will be a absolutely phenomenal player. And there really is no doubt in my mind that he at least makes all rookie first team. That is a guaranteed fact. Next up is James Wiseman in the all-star category. This guy is a 7-1 and a freak of an athlete. I mean, James Wiseman, there is nothing to not like about his game except for his three-point shot, which is borderline non-existent, or at least it was in college. In high school, he did have a much better three-point shot, which is something to look forward to. Maybe he can develop that at the next level, but we'll have to just wait and see, and that's why he's in the all-star category. It was hard for me to put Precious Achua over him in the Rookie of the Year slot because I sort of wanted to put James Wiseman up there with the Rookie of the Years. But I did think that you just need a three-point shot to really shock the fans and the rest of the league. Really, when you're talking about Rookie of the Year, you want a really flashy guy, and that's not really what James Wiseman is. I mean, sure, he gets plenty of, like, two-hand slams and far-out lob dunks, but if you don't have that three ball, people aren't going to want you to be Rookie of the Year. Unless you're Ben Simmons, which I'm still shook about. It should have been Donovan Mitchell. But whatever. James Wiseman in the All-Star category. He will be an All-Star at some point in his career. Next up, we have another solid starter in Devin Vassell out of FSU. This guy is just a pure three-point shot. I really like the way he plays his game, and he really shoots that ball high over his head, which is going to work out great for him at the next level. This guy has a consistent three-point shot. I've seen him hit five for five in a game, just straight off the bat, first, you know, first quarter of the game, first half. He is just a great player. I think he will be a solid starter for whatever team picks him for a while. Hopefully a team that knows how to use him or who can use him correctly gets him because he's not a number one scoring option he's definitely more of a a number two a number three he's definitely more of your clay thompson type where he's not going to bring the ball up court he shouldn't be dribbling he is just your pass it out and it's an automatic three ball and now we have another role player in tyrese hale burton i believe that he will just be a decent point guard for whatever team picks him i just there's something about this kid that i don't like Maybe it's his shooting form, which is kind of odd looking and not very smooth. Although it does work, the ball goes in very uh, a great percentage of the time. But I just there's something I don't like about Tyrese Hill Burton. I think it might have something to do with his frame. He's too skinny to be a point guard. Maybe he pans out. I could really see me being wrong about this pick particularly, but I think he will fit into that role player slot. He's a good passer. He's a good rebounder. But I just don't see him as being a solid starter and certainly not an all-star. But I don't really see him being like a bench warmer point guard either. I think he'll have a very similar career to, say, a Dennis Schroeder in Atlanta type of guy. I kind of like Tyrese Hilberton. I'm not too sure. That's why he's in this middle tier. Next up is Onyeke Okungawu. And I have him as a bench boy. I just don't like players that are touted for their defense in the draft. We have seen it time after time where a player who is said to have awful, god-awful defense comes into the league and has perfectly fine defense, if not good defense. Like Trey Young a couple years ago. People said you shouldn't draft him number one or, you know, even top five because he has no defense. He can't play defense at all. And he came into the league, he plays for the Hawks now, and his defense is just as good as any other point guards. I mean, he, he just play in defense. He tries hard on D, and that's really all it takes. I don't like guys who are touted for their defense. You think about players who came into the draft who were supposed to have really good defense, and maybe you think DeAndre Hunter from last year, but he was 
god awful. I mean, well, god awful to be the fourth pick in the draft. You don't draft that guy with the fourth pick. I'm still upset about that. And I don't think you take Onyeke in the lottery. Not in the lottery. I think you take him, like, you know, low lottery. But you don't take him in the high lottery picks, the top five kids, because he's known for defense. And that's just not a good combination to have in the NBA. We've seen guys who are known for defense fail, and we've seen guys who have ter- who are so told to have terrible defense who did great on defense. So really, it's not something you can measure from college. But offense is, and Onyeke was just eh. And again, for the same reason, it is Isaac Okuro, the guy who is supposed to be the best defensive player in this draft outside of Onyeke. I see him exactly like DeAndre Hunter, except a bit more of an athlete, so I won't put him in big yikes with Anthony Edwards. I really just think the only thing keeping it out, him out of there is his athleticism, because he's exactly like DeAndre Hunter from last year, and I absolutely despise DeAndre Hunter from last year, and then for some inexplicable reason the Hawks traded up for him, but whatever, I'm st- you can tell I'm still salty about that one. Isaac Okuro is in the yikes category because of the same reasons I was just talking about. I don't like picking defensive players. I think defense is very important. Defense wins championships in the NBA. We all know this. But I don't think you can draft based on defense in the lottery. You have to draft based on just talent level. You want your guys to be good at defense, but you don't pick them if they only have defense, right? Isaac Okuro only averaged like 13 points per game. That is not good enough for me as a NBA GM. Next up is the opposite of defense. It is Aaron Naismith, the man who shot 52% from three-point range this season while taking eight threes a game, averaging 23 points a game. This guy is pure offense. In my NBA comparison video, I compared him to James Harden. He loves the step back. He loves to just bomb away threes all day, and he hits them with a high percentage. He also hits his free throws with a high percentage. This guy is pure offense, and I love it. Now, that's not to say he's bad on defense, but he is just all about that offensive game, and he will certainly be an all-star, if not in the three-point contest or skills challenge as a rookie. He will be a potential all-star to an all-star in his NBA career. I'm sure of it. I love Aaron Naismith as a player, and I really hope he goes to a good team. Next up on this list is Corey Kispert, the small forward out of Gonzaga who averaged 13.9 points per game, but is just a silky smooth shooter. I mean, if I was going to say anybody was the next Kyle Korver, it would be Corey Kispert. This dude bombs threes like it's nobody's business. He gets his feet set, and it does not matter how many defenders are in his face. He is shooting that three, and it is going in. He shoots nothing but net on almost every shot. You gotta watch his highlights. They're absolutely beautiful. I mean, this guy is just a pure shooter. He's been on Gonzaga for three seasons, and this year he won their offensive MVP award. He is just a tremendous player. He is a great three-point shot, one of the best in the draft. His game is so silky smooth, and I love that about him. This is a guy that you put on your team, and he is a solid starter for you for years just because he can nail that three ball, just like Gordon Hayward was for the Jazz, just like Kyle Korver was for the Hawks. That is who Corey Kispert is. Next up is Daniel Oturu, and I would have put him in the all-star category, but I don't believe an NBA team will use him properly. I really love Daniel Oturu. He averaged 20.1 points per game and 11.3 rebounds, as well as 2.5 blocks a game. This guy is a player he is one of my favorite prospects in this draft however i see him being a very good solid starter for years but never really grasping that all-star quality but he will just be a really good nba center for years uh i mean sort of like deandre drummond not deandre drummond andre drummond don't kill me in the comments for that one you've already done enough andre drummond i see him as andre drummond in this draft You know, Drummond has never made an all-star team, but he is still one of the best centers in the league, and that's who I see Daniel Oturu as, just a phenomenal center coming out of this draft, and I believe he will be a great player. And now is another all-star quality player in Killian Hayes, the sharpshooter coming out of Germany. This guy is fantastic. His passing is phenomenal. He really reminds me of Trey Young from two years ago. You know, I mean, his passing is great, his shooting is great, 
but he is a bit more of a slasher and a bit more athletic than Trey Young was. And he, you know, he obviously doesn't have the quality of game Trey Young had. Trey Young's game was just insane. I mean, he led the NCAA in points per game and assists. That is just tremendous. I really don't know how people overlooked him with that one. I was really big on Trey Young before the draft, and obviously I was happy when the Hawks got him. And I would really be happy to see whatever team get Killian Hayes and use him correctly because he's a great passer. And when looking at point guard prospects in the draft, you really want someone who's good at passing because their offense can struggle and, you know, they cannot be able to hit their shots enough. But if they're a good passer, it's all fine. Every game they'll come out and they'll at least get your team a couple of buckets because they'll finish that game with seven assists. And that is who Killian Hayes is. He's a consistent, great player, and he will be an all-star in some point in his career. And the final prospect, Obi Toppin, on the Rookie of the Year candidate list, which means that I think Cole Anthony, Precious Achua, and Obi Toppin will be our Rookie of the Year candidates. Before the draft, obviously, once the draft comes out, I might make, might make another one of these, and we'll see if those change, you know, if they go to the wrong teams, and I don't think they'll be utilized correctly. A lot of this will probably change, but I see Obi Toppin as being a Rookie of the Year candidate, no doubt in my mind, and he will probably win it. Obi Toppin is just a phenomenal player. I mean, his athleticism is insane. His defense is great. His offense is great, averaging over 20 points per game. This is a guy that you want on your team. He is just such a great athlete. I mean, my NBA comparison was like Miami Heat LeBron. He's like LeBron now, but without the passing and a bit worse of a three-point shot. But obviously, he is a rookie, and that can always improve on both of those things that I just said. Obi Toppin is a fantastic player, and I am so excited to see him in the league. Let me know what you thought of this video. Tell me that I'm wrong about Anthony Edwards and Isaac Okuru in the comments down below, because I'm sure a lot of people disagree with this list. But this is my official and completely, totally opinionated list and on who I believe will have the best careers and what type of careers they will have in the NBA. Let me know down in the comments below what you disagree with, what you agree with, and please comment and subscribe. I much appreciate it.